So in this question, we have water and a calorimeter at 70 degrees Celsius in contact with aluminum at a cooler temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. We have shown an arrow indicating that heat will flow from the warmer objects to the cooler objects. And the amount of heat that flows is conserved. So what we can say in these types of problems is that the amount of heat absorbed by the colder object will equal the amount of heat released, if you will, by the hotter object. The only stipulation is that we have to include a negative sign in front of the heat released by the warmer objects. And the reason for that is as follows. The colder object is absorbing heat, so its value for the amount of heat that it's absorbing would be positive. Whereas the hotter object is releasing heat, so the amount of heat that we would calculate would turn out to be negative because it's being released. But of course we cannot set a positive quantity equal to a negative quantity. So what we do is include that additional negative sign so that the right hand side of the equation is indeed overall positive. That way we're setting a positive quantity of heat equal to a positive quantity of heat. And so with that little stipulation in mind, we can begin to expand this equation. Now, again, the colder object is the aluminum, and we've learned in this chapter that the Q can be calculated by taking the mass of the aluminum, multiplied by the specific heat of the aluminum, which is what we are looking for, and then multiplied by its temperature change. Now, the final temperature of the aluminum is 66.3 degrees Celsius, and then we would subtract the initial temperature, which was 27 degrees Celsius. So that's what we'll put in for the delta T for the aluminum. On the other side, we have two terms, one for water and one for the calorimeter. Let's start with water. We would have negative the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the water and then times the temperature change. Now, again, the final temperature is the 66.3 and the initial temperature for the water was 70 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to subtract, remember we are including a negative sign in front of all these terms on the right side, the mass of the calorimeter times the specific heat of the calorimeter and then times this same temperature change right here. So we have filled in some of the values so far, but we know other values. So why don't we paste this equation again, but this time we are going to include all of the masses. So let's go back up and see that the mass of the aluminum was 0.2 kilograms. So we can actually plug that in right here. 0.2 kilograms. And then the mass of the water was 0.4 kilograms. So we can plug that in accordingly. Now the specific heat capacity of water, we can check the table, it's probably not given. No, so they're gonna expect you to look that one up. And that has a known value of 4186, and this should be joules per kilogram degrees Celsius, so we'll fill that in. We are almost there, we need the mass of the calorimeter, that was given to be 0.04 kilograms squeeze this in here. And then the specific heat capacity of the calorimeter was given as 0.63. We gotta be careful here, that's in kilojoules for some reason they did that to us. So for this 0.63, and we're gonna run out of room here, you're gonna have 0.63, because it's in kilojoules, you have to multiply that by 10 to the power of three. That will put it in joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And then you're gonna multiply by that temperature change. I can't fit it in there, so we'll just subtract that. And that is negative 3.7. That's degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've squeezed everything in. Let's pick up our calculators and process this. You can try to do it in one step if you are feeling brave enough. And when you do that, you should get positive 6288.52. Dimensionally, the Celsius cancels along with the kilograms, so you're gonna be left with just joules. Then you can multiply the 0.2 times the 66.3 minus 27 over there on the left side, and you get 
this would be kilogram degrees Celsius, and that's multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the aluminum. Finally, just divide both sides of the equation by the 7.86 number. And when you do that, you will see that the specific heat of the aluminum is, well, it's about 800. These will cancel, so you get the specific heat of aluminum is 800. And then dimensionally, we have joules divided by kilogram degrees Celsius. So this would be the correct answer to the question.